special about M33 to me is that it's a nearby and therefore a large galaxy that's nearly face on to us. So it reads like an open book about all the processes you can see going on in a spiral galaxy. And by that I mean we start out with these dark molecular clouds and then with gravitational attraction they collapse and form blue supergiant stars that then put out intense ultraviolet radiation and ionize the rest of the cloud and you get an H alpha emission nebula like this. But they also put out fierce stellar winds that will drive away that gas and then the cluster becomes unbound and it spreads out into an OB3 association. And those stars being their blue supergiants, they live fast and uh, die young in supernovas. So the shock waves from the supernova will trigger collapse of the next neighboring cloud and the process repeats and then re-repeats and re-re-re-repeats. And as, it, as the galaxy rotates, that traces out a, a spiral arm with a lot of blue stars ornamented by these hydrogen alpha emission nebulae. So how did I make this image? I'm going to build it for you in real time in about five minutes, hopefully. So in Photoshop, I started out with the luminance frame, and I was just going to stretch that with curves. And I used my standard curve, which looks like that. And I actually just did two iterations of that curve. And there's my stretched frame. So I took that into PixInsight, and here it is. And part of the story was the dark molecular cloud. So I really want to bring those out. So PixInsight carries a script for that under Utilities, Dark Structure Enhance. And so I ran that. And you can now see we've got much more contrast in those dark clouds. But the stars of the show are the fact that, my gosh, you can see individual stars in this galaxy. So I really wanted to bring those out to try to help make the image pop. So I made a clone of that image. And I can bring out those individual stars using wavelets. So I went to Process, Wavelets, Multi-Scale Linear Transform. And those stars at about the 4 pixel level. And I found out a bias of plus 0.2 worked really well. So we'll throw that on there. And now you can see if we click back and forth, those stars are much more prominent. But it comes at the price of a lot of curdling noise in the brighter parts of the galaxy, extending out even into the dimmer parts of the galaxy and the background sky. But fear not, we have ways to deal with that back in Photoshop. So I saved those images and took them into Photoshop. And so here's the dark image with showing the dark clouds. And here's the wavelet star image. And what I want to do is I want to put those brighter stars that I enhanced with wavelets into this dark structure image, but without the noise. So how can I do that? Well, I first copied the image. And then I pasted it on the dark structure image. And I'm going to combine this using the lighten mode. In Photoshop, when you use lighten mode, it compares the brightness values in every single pixel between the top and bottom image and always selects the brighter of the two. So the good news is those wavelet stars that I enhanced are certainly going to be brighter, but the, a lot of the noise in the background is actually darker. So if we switch to lighten mode, a lot of that noise has vanished, but we still have some out in the periphery. But we can get rid of that with an object mask. So we add a mask, go into the mask, and we're actually going to use an image of the galaxy to make the mask. And we just copied one so we can paste it in there and then bring up levels and use the sliders. So white reveals. So I want those stars to show up in the bright galaxy and dark conceals. I don't want all the curdling that's in the dimmer parts of the galaxy or the background sky. And with that, my luminance was pretty much done. So now we need some excellent color. So back into um, PixInsight, I just pulled up the RGB frame, and I just applied a screen stretch to it and made that permanent. And then to get the colors right, I went to color calibration and did a photometric cal color calibration. And that takes a long time, so I won't show it. But I saved that image and took it back into Photoshop. And then I took this luminance that I'd finished and pasted it on top of the RGB that had been stretched and made an LRGB layer by blending with luminosity mode. 
And so now we have this LRGB image, but the colors are a bit washed out and I would certainly like much more vibrant colors. So for that, we'll go to the RGB layer and we'll convert from RGB mode into lab color mode so that we can do a lab color enhancement with contrast curves. So we pull up curves and we switch to the A channel, which runs the red and the green colors. And we want to put an inflection point right in the middle with a value of zero input and zero output. And the way we bring up the color by adding contrast is to grab the curve here and pull up. And then grab the curve over here and pull down by the same amount. And now we've increased the reds and the greens. And then we can go to the B channel which controls blues and yellows. Again, make a zero, zero inflection point in the middle and make the same type of curve pulling up here and down here. And now we have much more vibrant color. But again, it's come at the cost of a lot of noise in the dimmer parts of the galaxy and the background sky. But we can once again fix that with an object mask in the RGB channel. And so we paste our image back in there and once again, rely with levels on white reveals and black conceals. And so now we're gonna put that enhanced color basically in the galaxy and the brighter stars and leave it out of everything else. And now we're back here and that's looking better. And we'll put this back into RGB mode. So the only thing I'm missing now are my hydrogen alpha data to enhance these nebulae. So once again, I went into Pix Insight and I took the HA frame and I just gave it a screen transfer stretch and did a permanent stretch on histogram transformation, saved it, took that into Photoshop and opened it. And this is a grayscale image and we want color. So let's change the mode here to RGB color. And now image adjust hue and saturation and click the colorize checkbox and red is either zero or 360 doesn't really matter but we want to make these nebulae really red so i crank that up to 100 percent saturation and drop the lightness down to a minus 50. something like that now I'm going to put this over my LRGB image again with lighten mode so that only the brighter red nebulae show up and I don't want the red background sky. So we'll use levels and we'll clip the background sky so it's black so that lighten mode will not see it. But we can brighten up the nebulae so lighten mode will see it. And then I copy that image and I just pasted it on top of my LRGB. And there it is. And we combine it using lighten mode. And there's the finished image. 